Hello again, everybody. It's Carl Baldessar, and I'm not only back with the classic rock riff review, we're going to do a whole song rundown. And for today's episode, we're going to do Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. The song was released on November 8th, 1971. As, as I sit here today, it's about 51 years to the day. What I need to remind you is that Led Zeppelin was a live band. And if you're only listening to the studio versions of the band, I think you're getting less than 10% of what the band really was. And if you're a student of guitar and a fan of Jimmy Page, I think you're only hearing less than 10% of all the inventory of great licks and riffs and everything else that they were doing live. So what I'm gonna do on this is I am gonna kind of toggle back and forth between the studio version, but also kind of drop in some insights from the live versions. On the live versions of Black Dog, they never started the song just straight away like they do on the album. They always had something they bolted on the front, whether it was out on the tiles, where you had this riff. <laughs> Or they did uh, Bring It On Home, where they have the... And you get Robert Plant coming in on the A at the end of either Out on the Tiles or on Bring It On Home. But they would always start with something pretty big to announce the beginning of Black Dog Live. Okay, figure number one, the verse riff. All right, so let's get into the meat of this. And it opens up with the great line that John Paul Jones wrote. And I want to play it for you first, which is... So that great iconic riff that John Paul Jones wrote really is an A minor kind of pentatonic line, but in typical Zeppelin fashion, we had a little surprise in there. We've got this little chromatic run. You know, so we have the A minor riff starts on E. In between, though, you get the... So you're getting the, the uh, minor seventh interval, and then a major seventh interval, and then the octave. So you get this pushing sort of sense, so it's a very vibrant feeling. On the live version, man, you know, these guys are just full of just you know, swagger, and the lick has a little more swagger. What Page does on the studio is that he's doing a bend on the C, a little kind of weepy bend. So he's got the... <laughs> that kind of little puppy dog bend there. But on the live version, man, he's just wiggling it. So you get this. And I just think it's that attitude, you know, that kind of swagger, wiggle thing that's going on in the live version that really, really sets it apart. It's a pretty cool piece of expression on the guitar. Just a couple more little insights in terms of that opening riff. Uh, in terms of the way you want to pick it, you want to start with an up pick, so it's, it's this. So you got to get that up pick in there to get kind of get it sorted out just right. While we're focused on the verse riff, I'm going to kind of show you the harmony line that's happening on the fourth verse. Since we're right here on the same lick, it'll make sense if you hear it now. And there's two versions of it. There's the studio version and there's the live version. So the studio version of the harmony is this. <laughs> very subtle between the studio version that I just played and the live version. In the live version, again, you have a little bendy thing that's happening. You're picking up a little trend here, what happens in the live versions, you do get a little bit of bending and swaggering and wiggling. I mean, we are in the friction and moving business when we're dealing with Led Zeppelin. It's a very sensual band. So here's the live version. See if you can notice the difference. <laughs> You pick up that difference? Versus? You know, so that's a classic kind of pagey thing where you're just getting, this bend is speaking for several notes. The, and last but not least, the comment on the riff, the song, just the whole attitude of this piece, and where I think a lot of people get it wrong, is in the undercurrent of a swing rhythm that's going on here. And you're clued into it right off the top of the bat when Robert comes in, he says, 
Hey, hey, mama said the way you move, it's da 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 It's not straight eighth notes. That is the most important conception of this song and for a lot of Led Zeppelin's music. Because if you don't do that, you're going to wind up sounding like a lot of people that imitate it and they're just doing straight eighth notes and they're not doing swing eighth notes. And you wind up getting this sort of version that sounds sort of knuckle dragging, mouth breathing, <laughs> Neanderthal like. And in fact, this band is a jazz band, swing band, and you want to do that. And so all the elements of this band, and I'll, I'll point it all out, but they're all in the swing feel. So da dee da dee da 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 You know, I'm exaggerating the swing, but if you play it da dee da dee da dee da dee da dee da, you know, if you do that and you're just trying to, more important about what the notes are versus, you know, what's the expression behind the notes, you really will never make that last 10% that you need to to really capture the vibe of it. Okay, so now let's go with figure number two, the very gooey polyrhythm vibe that you get that releases from the verse line. Let me demonstrate it and then I'll tell you what I think the secret is to unlock it. So here, it's this line here, where it goes up. So that little sort of turnaround uh, kind of polyrhythm line that they have going on, which starts on B, it's the same shape largely as the main riff of the song. But the key to get that right and to slot it into 4-4 is in all of those pitches that are being played, there's two notes that are eighth notes. The rest of them are just a rail of 16th notes. The two notes that you want to linger on just for a brief bit are the G and the E. Okay, so that G, both of them are the same duration. Everything else is the 16th note. One, two, three, four. If you want to hold this little lick together, I would be thinking in 16th notes. So you've got one E and a two E and a three E and a four. The other thing I should mention is that when you're tackling that lick again, you need to upstroke the beginning. So watch, watch close here, ready? Did you catch that? Up pick. And the other thing I'll point out is that it, just the fingering, the crossover, the way I finger this is, I'm actually going down to the B with my second finger. So it's, and I go up to the G with my first finger. So it's a little bit of a crossover, it's a string skip. See that second finger? So kind of getting that uh, string skipping and using your third and your second finger to make that happen, I think helps. It can get a little tongue tied, but with a little bit of practice, you'll get it. All right, let's have a look at figure number three. All right, so after figure two, we really get into the big bombastic chord parts uh, in this swing chord part. And again, you'll hear the swing, but let me demonstrate the part for you first. <laughs> So if you really want to understand that part, I would say play it slow, play it clean, and play it until you get all of the upbeats and all of the swing going. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. Okay, so the combination of the swing and the upbeats, man, that's what makes the music so sensual. And uh, as I said before, these guys are in the moving business, man. They're out there to be moving butts, and they did a good job of that for sure, live especially. And finally, let's take a look at the epic figure number four. And now we get into figure number four. These are the big bombastic rhythm parts. You know, we've got the vocal acapella thing, yeah. But then they repeat it the second time through and it winds up being sort of the underscore for the epic guitar solo, which we're gonna talk about. And you know the riff, it goes like this. <laughs> So 
So the swing is still there on this big figure four, you know, ta ti ta ti ta ta ti ta ti ta 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 you know, it's like swinging through the whole thing. So again, even though it sounds like it's kind of Neanderthal power rock stuff, it's swinging through the whole thing. Every rotation of that riff, Jimmy's usually dropping in some sort of little fill back and forth. So you know, on the first one, he's playing the chords um, on the little turn part. So it's a... <laughs> then other times, man, he'll give you the... Um, he'll give you a little wah thing in there, so he'll go... <laughs> and then you'll get the wah. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to get from G to A. Sometimes you get kind of this little slide up. Right? And I can't detach my mouth from the wah pedal. I'm sorry, please. <laughs> but you can comment on my mouth doing the wah. There's one more fun little thing that he does is this little triplety ending to it. So he'll do this, so. turn it around and hand it back to Robert Plant. I always love that part. And then quite often between you know this figure and the other figure, you will get these bends on the end. He's, he's pointing, kind of handing the baton back to Robert Plant for the next line. You'll get these kind of that, or you'll get a single note. Sometimes you'll get a get one of those. So it's very bendy. We're talking live. It's very, very cool. If you're as much a Led Zeppelin fan as I am, and boy am I a fan because I've got a band called The Soul of Zeppelin, and we got some really great t-shirts for you. You can find them at carlbaldassarmusic.com. Go to the store. You can pick from two styles. They're all custom made. carlbaldassarmusic.com. All right, and now we come to the guitar solo. Oh my goodness gracious, this is a monster. And it's probably the swinginest, bending, most bending guitar solo of Jimmy Page's career. And there's a part here where it's just a bend a palooza, man. So we'll get into it. But, um, you know, the, there's so many variations of it in the live version. We'll, we'll kind of go back and forth and talk about it. But, you know, just right off the head, you know, they, he starts his entrance. His, he announces the entrance to the epic kind of intro run with this little kind of throwaway fill. It's a, you know, and that's kind of a riff that's similar to the little turnaround riff on rock and roll. But uh, that gets us into... That epic, great intro riff, man, that, uh, and, um, I mean, he plays that really quite flawlessly in most of the live versions, too. You know, I've listened to many of them, and uh, I've been impressed with how he nails that all the time. I find that to be a very difficult kind of fussy thing to pick, because it's just all this inside picking in here. <laughs> But one of the things that'll help you is that you'll notice that he has an open A to start the run, and then he has an open A to end the run. And the run and the lick is not over until you come back from. That completes the phrase. So that A, open A, sort of frames the entire run. Uh, the other thing, uh, the, the one little thing you might notice that I'm doing that's a little different than what he's doing in terms of fingering, when I get up to the A C sharp interval up here, I'm fingering it a li little differently. He'll finger it with his first and second finger. Like that. I finger it with my second and my third finger, so. I find for me it keeps my hand position. So it kind of keeps me in this sort of frame right here. But I know why he's doing this. I think that's actually friendlier to get into the release lick. But I just started it that way many, many years ago. So I'm sticking with my sort of, and I do it with a hybrid pick. So I'm down stroking the C sharp with the pick. And then I'm with my third finger, I'm plucking up on the A. Yeah, so I think the vibe is there, you know? All right, so I mean, once you get all that under your fingers and you make the grand entrance to the solo, 
Um, you know, he on the studio, he gives you some basic shapes. And what I love about the solo is that if you'll notice that it's registering up the neck. So as we increase the raise these pitches as we go, you're increasing the tension and the friction. And this is a friction business that we're in here. <laughs> we're selling Black Dog. And I really love that. And then he kind of releases it back down. So when you have the opening run, and then Yeah, I just want to point out that, you know, you're starting getting into the bends and this great bend. You know, very expressive. It's going by so fast, but when you slow it down, if you have a slow down program to kind of learn the solo, you'll hear at rapid speeds, man, he is finishing every note and he is putting so much expression, but it goes by so fast, you know? And then he re-registers up even further. So you get a little bit of a Hendrix kind of vibe when you get up there. So, and then <laughs> to attack this while I'm sitting down, now we're going to get into the biggest bends of all time, right? So you're way up here, way up on top of the guitar. So, that's amazing. And to get those to speak, you have to have both of those bent notes and the fingered note ringing at the same time. So you get that squawk, you know? You want to get that in there. This is a cool little lick if you just repeat it and just get the feel of it. You see? Really, really cool. And that's happening in there one time. And then he's wrapping it up with a classic pagey. You know, so that's a classic page. So we're all the way up there and then we come down to another classic page lick, which is, uh, takes it right back down to A here, so. And he does that a couple of different ways live. He'll be up, he'll be doing sometimes this one where it's sort of a longer slurpier bend. But either way, or the, you, know, you get the same sort of pagey bendy effect there, as well as sort of the, the way he kind of wraps that up with it. And then you get into a beautiful phrase here with these little chromatics. Yeah, that's just so cool, man, that. Right? I mean, that's just so unorthodox. And the, um, the lick to come out of it, you know, he's... Yeah, that is really, really cool. Sometimes we'll do the, uh, the, the A to the G. You know, he did that, I think, it, I heard it in 75. It was very, very cool. And then, uh, so you, you just notice how, you know, he started down here, had the great riff. We're bringing it up with the bends. We get up here to the iconic in A. Uh, and then we're bringing it back down again and we get down as low as we can go. The F sharp, right? So I mean, tremendous use of the real estate of the entire guitar neck. And then we're gonna go back up for one last sort of run at everything. You know, starts with our run. And then we have these major third bends. And then on the studio version, you get this nice, be this bouncy bend on the end. You know, so you get that cool rotation during the fade out. And on the live version, you know, he'll be in this sort of real estate, but he extends the solo, right? So you get some of that, you'll get these. And then you'll get him ascending. That's a really cool live lick that he does. I don't know if you've ever tried to pick that one off, but it's super, super pagey, where he's coming out of the, uh, kind of the A pentatonic. And what he's doing right there at blazing speed 
He's got this minor seventh interval, kind of the D to the uh, E, and then he's got a major seventh interval, F sharp and G, and then he terminates it by taking it up to our tonic note of A. So, and then he immediately has it tumble back down. And then he does his uh, minor third bend from F sharp up to A. So he's got so many other cool things in his toolbox, you know, in the live stuff, you know, some he's kind of re-quoting some stuff he did from Heartbreaker, so you might get this. And then sometimes when he's lingering on the high parts here, the he'll really go high. And he has this sort of classic fill. That yeah, so he's, he'll work the whole neck on this solo. It's really quite incredible. The other thing about Jimmy Page, a lot of people ask me about his major to minor kind of stuff that he's doing in solos. And in this, in this solo and in this song, you know, we're in this sort of uh, A minor pentatonic world. But then he'll drop in the C sharp and give you the, uh, the A major. You know, he'll give you that. And then he'll go to the relative minor of A, which is the F sharp minor here. So he'll mix between the F sharp minor and the A major and then the A pentatonic. And it's just really a, kind of just a very smooth sort of shifting between the three sort of tonalities that makes the solo, makes the song so awesome. And so now we come to the, the outro of the song and the live versions. And I think this ensemble ending that they did might be the most, I don't know, what would you call it, the most bombastic sort of ending. I mean, it was absolutely tremendous showmanship, but they would come out of the, the main riff, the... Uh... They would hold the G chord and then Paige would kind of do a little run up here. So... So we're doing those minor six, major six sort of runs around G. Right, and then when he would get up there and Bonham's doing a big roll there and then they would switch to a C to D. And then the band would stop, another big roll. So there you have it, Black Dog by Led Zeppelin, both live and studio elements. And I should mention to you that actually I have a band called The Soul of Zeppelin, and we actually play Black Dog live with a lot of these sort of insights in it. So be sure that you go through my YouTube channel, find that performance and several other performances that I've posted. And we also really appreciate you subscribers. We're looking for more subscribers. So please like and subscribe and share. And uh, we'll see you again on the next episode. My name is Carl Baldessar. Thank you. And um, what's really cool about that is that you're getting, uh, I don't know what's really cool about that, actually. <laughs> gotta make some up. Ooh, wee. <laughs> we gotta sell donuts here. Come on, what are we trying to do? Oh yeah. He's got so many other kind of things in his tool box. Tool, no. He's got so many things on his, in it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, subscribe, share your comments with me, tell your friends and your neighbors what we're doing over here at Carl Baldessar YouTube channel. <laughs> we desperately need you. <laughs> I can't pay the rent without you. We thank you very much for your comments too, and uh, we'll, we're looking forward to bringing you another episode again. I don't know how to end it. How to end it. Yeah, it's the outro. All set? Yes, sir. Good luck on this one, Bill. <laughs> You'll have to piece together. <laughs>